Ciao Balloon Express TV, Chris Adamo from BalloonPro.co here. If you want to learn how to make this, stay tuned. Hello everybody, Chris Adamo from BalloonPro.co. Uh, we're filming from our shop in Sydney, Australia. I can't wait to share with you because behind me we have uh, the beginnings of an organic arch using all foil balloons. So no latex. Uh, using foils is a very different technique, especially our more uh, two-dimensional pillow foils like the stars and the hearts and, and, and the likewise. So um, stay with us, can't wait to share. Let's have a look at the framing. So uh, I use, with all of our organics, I use aluminium framing inside. When it needs to be self-supported, aluminium framing is the best way to go. So here we have um, 16 mil, so that's the outer diameter, and 12 mil. Um, so tube being hollow, and the reason why I use those two sizes is because they fit nice and snug inside each other, as you can see. So this particular arch, which I've pre-made, it uh, 16 mil slides into our base plate, like so. Now we've spoken about base plates many times, so we can include a link here in the video of base plates. So the larger 16 mil, fits over the threaded rod and here we have our smaller 12 mil piece which has, just has a bit of curve to it and it comes in like so. Alright so we've already started with a little bit of it and I wanted to show you where we're up to so far and then we'll go through those steps. So with our 36 inch foils here we've attached them using stretchy balloon tape. Okay so there's two points there and the other 18 inch foil in the front, we'll show you that method later and we'll keep building. All right, so first things first, let's talk about inflating our foil balloons. So I've got a couple pre-made, but let's just go through from the very start. And uh, I've got an air compressor here behind me with a little trigger hose hookup. Now, of course, you can use a hand pump or any other method. The reason why I really like our air compressors is because we, with the hand pump, we can show the or control the exact amount of air that I want some very very light amount of air to a large amount of air so I like with the self-sealing valves to be very delicate so slow easy inflation speed just so we don't damage that valve in any way the other thing that's good when inflating foils is to have it in line so that that valve that's inside there is nice and straight without any kinks to it. And when we get to the end, we just go a little bit slower. We want to have a few crinkles, of course, but not too many. It's just a balance. If it's going to be really hot outside, of course, then we can't even have as many, uh, we have more wrinkles, so it has a greater opportunity to expand into that space. Now, what we're doing here is because it's not a helium balloon, we're not tying to the neck. We want to actually hide that neck. So, it's important that the direction that we hide it is against the barcode side. So I'm just gonna get my sticky tape. Now, we, even when using tape, use the thickest brand that you can get. Thicker, of course, just means a better bond, more contact, and use more tape for this than you think. So I've just cut off about, I don't know, four inches, thereabouts, maybe 15 centimeters, something like that. And I'm just gonna get over good amount of that valve there and folding it over the barcode side I'm going to apply pressure as I have a huge amount all right so that's our foil preparation um, when we go down to the nine inch foils um, now we're using a heat sealer so let's talk about heat sealers quickly um, we uh, the, the brand here that we use what's it called we got it from our Qualitex supplier um, and the uh, setting, the temperature setting is at four, number four. Now I'm sure that might be vary from place to place. Um, we can use a hand pump on this or our trigger hose as well. Now when pumping, you need to go a little tighter because you're gonna lose a little bit of air uh, on the sealing process. So go quite tight 
hold on for dear life. Now with this process here, there's a little tip. Because we're essentially melting the balloon, we don't want to pull it too hard, okay? So when we're pulling in, what I do is I pull it flat along the heat sealer, and then I actually grab the balloon and I push the balloon towards me, and that actually takes out some of that force. So when I hold it down, essentially what's happening is the balloon's not trying to pull apart, it's not trying to separate, which is essentially um, while, it, while that valve is melted, if it's trying to then pull or stretch, that's when it's weakest. Okay, so I'm just taking that pressure. So the other thing I'm looking for is not to have any folds on the neck. Okay, so you can see a little one there. Okay, so you want it, the neck to be nice and flat so that when you seal it, it seals it really flat without it um, folding or buckling the neck. So the way that we achieve that again is push it in and pull, okay? So when you pull it towards you, it um, separates, it flattens that valve. I always go three times. One, two, three, it costs nothing. Um, just in case there's a, a bit of air coming out from the first few. So we can see here. So once again, sticky tape over the, uh, the branding or the, the barcode. Like so. All right. So now back to our arch itself. Now, of course, when we were creating organic arches with foil balloons, to me it was very important that the face of the foil faces forward. So to me it's very important that the star faces forward and hence we came up with this particular method. So when I build, um, I'm using our, let's talk about our adhesive materials. There's two things that you must have. First is stretchy balloon tape, which is a click click product available from any of your Qualitex distributors. So let's go through that process. So I might just bring this forward a little. So we can see. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do, I always start with my biggest balloon. So this is looking from the back, of course. And I want it to touch one under but then of course I want it to be flat on the frame. Um, so, just finding a spot that works, that looks pretty good. And now we're just sort of having a look at where our adhesion point will be, which is there. A few stretchy balloon tape, cut about uh, two inches. I know it's not cheap, but you need to use a sufficient amount of it. And then you peel backing off like so all right so back to here that's where we want it and I'm trying to have it so you guys can see apply halfway all the way to the rod to the aluminium and then wrap around and I'm going to explain that to you a little closer to camera. So we want to go on one wall of the, the rod, of the pole, around it, and then start going back towards the foil balloon. All right, so now we can actually get two points of contact here. The more the merrier. Now I would always build these on site. I wouldn't risk making it at, in, the, in the warehouse or your workshop and then trying to transport it. Have all your balloons inflated in advance, yes, that's a great idea, but you really do need to attach it on site. All right, so let's start again. You can start on the pole even, roll down uh, onto the balloon. Okay, so I'll just show you that method quickly. So you can see how the tape comes down the balloon along the wall of the pipe and then across the wall and back. It's not flat, okay, you're not just going one piece across, you're coming down to the pole, up, around and then down, just so you have maximum bond to the pole itself. Alright, so let's look back towards the front.
Now we need our U-glue uh, dots or dashes, which are these guys. So I'm gonna place, I'm gonna think about where I want this to go. And I want that to sit up a little more. So I'm gonna get one of my dashes on the point. I've just marked it with my finger exactly where I want it to go. Peel it off, just massage it so that the adhesion has a bit, a bit of warmth and can stick a little better. All right, let's put it back here. Okay, so that's our next point. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna build all the way up the frame. Um, generally, I like to taper a little bit, go a little bit smaller as I work my way up. Um, and then we start adding balloons on top for that next multi-layered dimension. So let's keep at it. Um, thinking about color, perhaps we can go another blue here because we've already done a 18 inch gold down there. So I'm also thinking about hiding that frame. So I'm probably gonna go over here. So I just need a point there and a point there. So there's two ways to do this. Now, I usually like to get my first you glue dash on, having a look. Always kind of keep the neck down as well. Even though the neck is hidden, the shape is a little bit different. So you notice there's a difference between this and this. All right, so I'm just marking out my point, which will be there. All right, and now with it attached, but not attached, because I haven't removed the other side, I'm going to then get my finger in and I'll hold that point here. So this is the second one. You really always need two. Now I could remove the backing tape. And carefully, so I'm trying to apply them both at the one time. So sort of line it up. All right, so we've hidden that pole there. And we, I'll drop it a little bit so we can continue moving forward. Okay, there's our cantilever. Next one. Let's maybe go a bit smaller. About here. So, stretchy tape. And we'll get one little U-glue dot to equalize or stabilize this. So you can see the process. It's quite simple, as I said in the introduction. Just really, these two products working your way down. And what I love about it is once you've hidden that frame, it looks like it's just floating, uh, almost like helium balloons in this beautiful, beautiful shape. Uh, Let's see if we want another big one. Yeah, I think so. I quite like the depth as well that this big one gives us being in front of the 18 inch foil. We'll show you a photo when it's done. <laughs> All right. piece on that. Now what stops it pivoting, is this is falling down like so, um, I'll to show you there. All right, so that motion of the pivoting is actually really the U-glue dots, okay? Because if we're just attaching to the frame, then we only have one point of contact in which it can pivot from. But when it's attached to all the things around it, now we're creating a three-dimensional shape where there's multiple points of support. All right. So, 
if I move this back like that, you might be able to see it a little better. Great, so I'm really happy with how that's turning out so far. Let's just add a few little more. Maybe start with our smaller nine inch stars now, just for those little bits of detail. Generally as well with organics, I like to have a, a wider base. Okay, so generally uh, I like to see it um, with a stronger foundation and then tapering very subtly. Okay, so it doesn't have to be achieved by having huge amount of double or triple mass. And I've even got a big 36 inch at the end, but it's just a, a little subtle by adding a few extra balloons so the eye can see a stronger foundation. So that can be achieved by adding more of our smaller balloons to the base and less of the smaller and different size balloons as we work our way up. So with these, we're, we're pretty much hit in the frame. So the rest of the work here on is gonna be by using the U-glue dashes. So let's go here. Like that, get up. Might add that like this. You can see that, that looks good. All right, so once again, it's a bit tricky when that's I'm just going to start with this point here. So when you're at the end actually with your dashes, it's quite good to squeeze. It's a bit hard if it's on, a, on an edge or a thick part of the, the pillow, you can push against you or something else. But the more you can compress it and heat it up a little bit, it'll be a much better bond. In fact, if you can get your dashes in um, a few hours in advance, it's, it's always much stronger. But here, of course, we don't know where they're gonna go, so we have to work quickly. So that's, that's there. The other one is gonna go, I'm just gonna put that in there. The other one, just here. Cute. All right, let's add some more. So we actually don't use that much stock on a shape like this, do we? I'm gonna do two on this one because I really wanna provide a bit of extra support between this 36 inch and 18 inch. Maybe one here, there's a lot of activity going on there, that looks cool. Or there we go, I like that. Just there. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time when you go on site for a job like this. Very cool. So here we have an arch. I know you can't quite see it all, but I'm standing very comfortably underneath it. Um, and this could be used in many different things from, uh, you know, it could be underneath, a, a, above a cake table, um, an entrance for people to walk in. We've created many designs like this um, in its actual shape. So perhaps using heart foil balloons, we've created a frame that's a heart. Um, and also with creating a, a star shaped frame, but with actual stars. So the great thing about aluminium is you never know what kind of shape you perhaps need when you get on site. So I normally bring in my aluminium tubing exactly in just, this has been reused and reworked. As you can see, it's quite old. Um, but I bring it in and I actually you can just bend it real time to create a shape um, in many different ways uh, to suit the occasion. And it's self-supporting so you don't have to attach anything to the uh, uh, the room which is an absolute win. So I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope it's helped and as always uh, if you have any questions please find me on YouTube or, or Facebook um, and I'm always be happy to help. Thank you.